what it is what's the video in the cut um i don't know if the first half of this video like literally the first half of the chapter is legible uh i was recording it in my car my car was hot laptop was hot coding overloaded pretty much immediately seems to be good right now so uh i'm going to recap the first half of this kind of just get some brief thoughts and get to the second half uh because i feel like it's impossible to get a first reaction again um so again rp tori uh toriyama i have a short that uh, i can clip in here up i think that uh, i kind of go into you know a little bit more impact that toriyama had on me at least um toyotaro this should pretty much more or less be uh the last chapter that toriyama and toyotaro like explicitly worked on uh I, i'm sure storyboarding wise there's more story that uh, toyotaro has to adapt I'm sure they had a follow-up to Superhero, uh, the, the arc Superhero, because this is the last chapter. So I'm imagining in some capacity that there was another uh, that was planned out that uh, hopefully is going to be game over. But basically, uh, there, there's going to be a follow-up, I would imagine, that was at least roughly schemed out by uh, the two of them. This is pretty much Toriyama's baby, and I think it has been for quite a while, but uh, Toriyama obviously does story input. Or had story input, um, RP of course, but um, so I imagine that more or less like he yeah, had you know at least an inkling of where this was gonna go. Um, let's just get into it. Uh, I said in the first half, the title that title was picked out before you know, uh, Tori Upper passed away. Obviously, that's incredible. Hopefully, uh, the fucks up to upstairs do not make too much noise because uh, you know, I'd like to not have to do this fucking piece again. So that's again the first uh, first half here, first page. Um, again, a continuation of Gohan against uh, Goku, Super Saiyan White against Super Saiyan White. Uh, pretty much what we have here is roughly stating that Gohan in their beginning stage here is basically beating back Goku. Um, still, again, love kind of the... I don't, I don't know, I mean... Like, the lightning is, like, he had the red kind of lightning in, in Super Hero, the movie. The hair isn't horrible. Like, I, I, I can get used to it. I don't, like, balk at it every time I see it. Um, the gi, I think the piccolo gi, I think it works better for Gohan, uh, Gohan. I'm thinking about the Goku gi, where, I mean, it's still, like, you associate with Gohan, but I just think, like, Teen Gohan, Purple gi. Kid Gohan against Raditz. Um, well, that was like kind of the, like the cramp, I think the Grandpa Gohan fit. But uh, Kid Gohan against um, when he knocks back the Spirit Ball that hits uh, Vegeta. That's Piccolo Gi. Um, I don't know. I mean, as far as an adult, I don't know if he rocks the Piccolo Gi in a uh, Majin Buu saga. But anyway, a lot of the big moments he rocks the. Piccolo Gi, so, and, uh, it looks good on him, uh, as Goku says here, this is the Latin potential that, uh, was always there, but it's combined with training, uh, the point I made initially was that this isn't, this is literally the author telling you, like, this isn't just an ass pull for Gohan, like, it's not just Gohan got mad and he just became the strongest Saiyan in the fucking world, like, it, it's telling you that since the freeze embarrassment, Gohan is trained and trained, um, you know, maybe sometimes more than others, but he's trained to be less of an embarrassment. And the uh, payoff for even, like, he's not Goku and he's not doing that much training, but with the payoff of what he's done, combined with his, as we've always seen, he has more potential than anybody else in the fucking universe, pretty much. Um, other than maybe Frieza, we we'll guess we'll see, hopefully. Hopefully we'll see. Um, then we get to this point where training plus potential uh, plus pissed off, Gohan's the strongest in the world again. That's just that's just kind of what we see with Super Saiyan Two Gohan and then with Ultimate Gohan. It's just anytime he puts in some work, basically becomes the strongest in the world again. So that's what Goku says. He's moving to something else through training, um, and then Goku here at this point. At uh, one point I made so. To me, uh, this is obviously his true in Ultra Instinct Goku, where this is him combining 
sort of the traits of the defense of the black-haired UI and then adding it to what we thought was a finalized version, uh, Super Saiyan White uh, UI Goku, which gave him offensive ability that the other just did not. He really couldn't combine the two very well. Um, so that's kind of where we get to here, where this one, I think, was supposed to more or less be the combination of both. However, now that I think about it, I thought the true UI was black, black hair. Am I tripping? Oh, it was like a silver. It was like a combination of both, as far as I remember, like the coloring go. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but that's just what my brain is telling me right now. In either case, so when he's in like true UI state, obviously his speed is just amazing. Um, he kind of speed blitzes Gohan here. And um, as we'll see here, he also is uh, defensively moving on, you know, pure instinct. So, yeah. So, basically, this part right here, Vegeta, uh, he's pretty much saying that, like, the gap between those two is pretty much just made up by Goku's fighting acumen, how often he fights, how much time he's spent with uh, UI versus Gohan, who's pretty much had Beast for maybe a week now. Like, it's not that many days that have elapsed between the end of Cell and Mats and... Carmi coming to his front door. Like there's you know really not that much time at all. Uh but he did he did, as I recall last chapter, he did tap into Beast. I think immediately, right? Like he just went straight into Beast when uh he thought that like Pam might have been hurt. So it's something that he clearly like has pretty good control over for it to be such a short amount of time. But yeah, so this is Master UI, like we said. And then uh Beast Gohan, this is just Beast Transform or not Transform, but I'm just powering up. Literally just him is hurting more chi, like Vegeta kind of says here. Um, and then the point I made here was that with Vegeta having seen uh, UI Goku, Jiren, um, even God of Destruction Topo, Black Frieza, Granola, um, the guy that basically like did the same thing as Granola, like he powered up and he like he just withered away. All of those people. Uh, I said Black Freeze already. Uh, Broly, you know. With him having seen all those people, he's shocked by Gohan's amount of power, Gohan's speed. Uh, and these guys, like I said, they got speed blitzed by Black Freezer just, you know, a few months ago, a few weeks, a few weeks ago, something like that. And um, Goku, also surprised. He's seen pretty much everything that Vegeta's seen. You know, Broly, he's seen Blue Gogeta. So, I mean, these people have all seen very strong levels of power. Uh, not to mention Beers and Whis, and, like, what they're seeing out of the Gohan is just insane. Um, also, one thing I noted is that, like, I really love the eye kind of styling for, um, for some reason, man, just the way the eye looks on Gohan there, it just, it just works really well. Um, so, yeah, he's pretty much getting faster and faster, getting closer to hitting Goku. Uh, Goku, at this point, can kind of, like, kind of dodge the hits, but as we see here, Gohan just keeps on pretty much getting stronger uh, and faster, and we get to a point eventually where Gohan, the margin of error shrinks to a point where he's pretty much like scraping Goku, and this part, I just love this panel, I just love it. Goes all out, hits Goku, and uh, pretty much just knocks him the hell out. Uh, not, not literally knocks him out, but like hits him so hard, just breaks him through the whole fucking island. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if he actually knocked him out of base, but he went out of base, so we'll just say he did. Um, and then this is a, another point I made. We should be almost to the point where I can actually read it live. Like, it's just, you know, new to me. Um, Berserk. So we've seen variations of the Berserker concept with... Uh, we'll just stick with Super. With Raised Trunks, with Kale, with Broly... Uh, and now, I mean, more or less, like, this, what he's describing kind of, I think that fits go on. Now, I don't know if Berserker necessarily is a transformation that all four of those individuals, like, have. But at the same time, like, it's in a, a level of power that almost um, is a separately of transformation. Like, Broly has, I think, a, a Raft or a Berserker transformation um, in Dokkan. Like, basically that stage where he's almost about to break out of his, you know, uh, necklace or whatever, choker, whatever you want to call it, a control device, 
when he's fighting Vegeta. So that's the strongest transformation before he goes Super Saiyan. Uh, Kale, her Berserker, is her going to basically what is legendary Super Saiyan in uh, Dragon Ball Z. And then, obviously, Ray's Trunks is kind of like a Super Saiyan 2 level. Like, whatever puts him, like, above Super Saiyan 2, that blue R. So, everybody has, like, this presented a little bit differently. As you kind of note here, um, control over his power. We says to this here, um, Goku, uh, Goku son of Super Saiyan? No, not quite. And it's not a divine technique. It's a singular talent. It's all of his own. So, pretty much what this is, like I said, um, I think it's the Berserker kind of state applied with ultimate gohan like everybody pretty much understands at this point like this transformation beast is a level above ultimate gohan we've seen it a thousand times the panels of gohan saying he wants to obtain a, obtain a power that's different than super saiyan um kind of gives him heritage to his human traits as well so i think this is just what berserker looks like for him kind of beast more or less and we've seen it kind of come about out of rage the same way we saw super saiyan 2 come out of rage so if he's going a different direction than super saiyan 2 then it makes sense that it comes it comes down a different way so yeah goku at this point and we're about to get live for me at least uh going back to spar with vegeta or vegeta uh he's so used to goku and vegeta but gohan he realizes here that um he can actually have broly again learn the kind of concept of control here so he uses kind of god ability uh, I've got a decent reading of your strength now. Let me say I'm impressed. You're about the only one who can master a move like that in no time flat. Go on. Kudos. Honestly, I can rest easy knowing the earth will be safe once I'm gone. We'll see. I do I do honestly believe, though, that whatever they had planned next, uh, you know, between Toriyama and Toyotaro, I do believe that Black Freezer would have been about the end of Super. Like, maybe not the last arc, but between the long layoff... Um, you know, us kind of trying to farm up, uh, you know, Broly and, and, uh, and now Gohan making Piccolo relevant again, like meta relevant, you know, shout out to Dokkan. I, I, I do think that they would have maybe did Black Frieza where we pretty much have like the ruthless, I'm not fucking with you niggas no more Frieza, him against Goku, Vegeta, and maybe Broly and, you know, everybody else. I, I just, I just don't see how you can do Frieza again and not like have him be like the big bad obviously i still think they they are fully committed to making oob relevant i still believe that's part of the plan but i don't just want to say you could do freeze again without like him being like part of the end game and you also did sell again so i mean maybe you know you just sell you a freezer you come with boo and boo oob you know kind of ended like that so you've got some gas left in the tank because there's someone else who should take a crack at you um and then we get to the point where broly Broly, who pretty much gets infinitely, you know, powerful, uh, makes sense to try to have him fight go on. So, uh, and obviously the control part of things as well. <laughs> You're on the planet. <laughs> they thought they were still on Earth. You need to sell your duel. No, I wasn't fighting because I wanted to be gone or anything. I'm just happy knowing how strong he's gotten. He gets me that much more to look forward to. So, yeah, I mean... It's kind of like, almost like Go Goku against Cell. Like, he's just pretty much gauging how powerful the guy is. That's probably earned your high expectations as well, you could say that. From what I can tell, those who have something in common. Indeed, the notion of a beast certainly fits Broly as well. So here we go. I mean, that, that's pretty much what I was saying. Like, that, that whole Berserker premise uh, is not just exclusive to Gohan. Uh, it's just, you know, tied a little bit differently for Broly. That makes sense. They, they they even put it on there, you know. Uh, your beast form from before, as you wish. So, Gohan goes effectively all out. You can just, like, snap him to it immediately. It's just so crazy how quickly he can do it. Um, so, we go in that. And he could even... By the way, like... It, <laughs> it's funny how like, the premise of, like, kind of resting your laurels works in this for at least Gohan. He couldn't go Super Saiyan 2 for a good-ass minute in the... Um, Dragon Ball C, uh, Z, Majin Buu Saga. It took him a while to go back to Super Saiyan 2. Um, but when he's just ready to go, dude, he just, just goes right into it. So a heavy blow. As we've seen in some prior chapters, once Broly's pushed, he becomes stronger. And um, he doesn't have exactly control of it, but I imagine it's going to be uh, 
you know, full power of Super Saiyan Broly coming up here. Okay, so it's just Super Saiyan. Okay. That's just normal Super Saiyan state. Okay. So he seems to have controlled it a little bit. He's pushing back Gohan, it looks like. He's gone Super Saiyan, but look, his eyes tell us he's still himself. Good for him. He's tamed his own unruly transformation. Such huge power, unlike any of the Super Saiyan forms I've seen. Evidently, Broly's achieved some growth thanks to Gohan. He's still just a Super Saiyan, though, while Goku's kids a better handle on the power he's toting. So this is probably the equivalent of Kale. Like, Kale goes Super Saiyan 2 after she uh, tames that transformation. At least, as I recall from Dokkan, her net state is Super Saiyan 2 after Berserk. So... This does not appear to have the aura of Super Saiyan 2. I'm guessing it's going to call it, like, Super Saiyan Broly Tamed, I guess. Because, I mean, it doesn't have, like, the Telltale, you know, like, bang uh, to kind of represent Super Saiyan 2. So, I guess it's just Master Berserk, you know, Master Super Saiyan Go, uh, Broly, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, Beerus is clearly, like, is indicating here that there's... Basically, he has his power like what he had previously locked down but he's not like necessarily expanded past that quite yet so destruction is in the car for someone that's straight laced so he kind of just has to you know really break his limits per se <laughs> we got goku looking at fucking trunks of gohan or goten uh, Vegeta's looking, uh, God, what's her name? Um, Broly, Chi-Lai, and Limo. I had to think about Dokkan for a second. Um, chi -Lai is yawning, I guess, and Vegeta's pissed. Why am I the man to beat? Why don't you take us on, Broly? What the fuck? <laughs> so all the Saiyans have a little fun. Vegeta wants to fight Gohan, which we have not seen, uh, Vegeta and Gohan fight since i believe saiyan saga uh we've had tons of gohan and vegeta moments but no fights i think since saiyan saga uh, frieza uh frieza saga i think they had a couple of couple of spats i don't know if they had a full-on fight i think they had a couple moments but past that i don't think they've had any moments you know like that i think frieza saga was the last time so we got all the saiyans going crazy i think that's i think that's blue I don't, think, I don't think it's UE. Uh, Goten and Trunks. I don't like people are gonna be like, are they fighting? I don't think they're actually fighting. Um, I don't think so anyway. Like I think it's I don't think they're like I don't mean they're like fighting comparably. Like I think they're just kind of fucking around. But Goku's uh, probably wants to turn as well. Um, so now we have sit Saiyans now. I believe these are all the Saiyans on except uh, it's a Pan and um. All the ones that, like, really matter. You know, Vegeta's brother still somewhere out there, I guess, maybe. But uh, I think these are pretty much the only ones that matter at this point in time. And, um... I'm also missing somebody. Gohan, Goten, Trunks, Vegeta, Goku, Broly, Gohan. I mean, I think that's about it, right? Uh, so why'd you punch me, Goten? I don't know, I don't know if she's Trunks. And they, like, completely destroyed the uh, island here. So yeah, everybody's impressed with, with, with Gohan today. We got, we got some singers, man. We might have some more coming up, but when we got some for now. Uh, Bola, uh, Bola, who... Bola should be older than... Because Bola was the one that popped out uh, when we did, like, the, you know, time spell on, on Bulma. So Bola should be older than Pan, but I don't think... I mean, at least in GT, she wasn't much of a fighter, so I don't know if she... I don't think she will be in this canon either, but we'll see. Limo is the greatest cook in the universe. Who are you two again? They're with the Red Ribbon Army. And why are they here? I'm surprised Goku remembers who the Red Ribbon Army is. I need to make an apology for their previous actions. That's why I've seen all this shit. They gotta call it a day. 
Maybe we should head home for a bit. <laughs> Bo may lose interest. <laughs> She's gonna make the Yamtree out here, dude. Piccolo is relevant now, man. They could like look for Krillin and they didn't have Piccolo. You people need to learn when you're beat. They just had to get the hell out of there. <laughs> so that might be it for the Red Ribbon Army, man. They might be finished, dude. Not, probably not, but. She's your own grandchild. I saw people pissed about that on, on, on the timeline. So here's what happens here. So Goku is like looking at Piccolo. Like he's, you know, super powerful and all that shit. You know, uh, he wants to fight him. And then Goku is like, who the fuck is Pan? And people say like the translation is off here. Like he's like surprised that some people say that he's surprised that he is ducking on the fight to go, you know, go pick up Pan. Go be a family man. The problem where that find where that kind of logic falls apart is that if you look at the surrounding text, clearly here, Vegeta's saying is you're under disgrace. Gohan's clearly shocked. Goku's sheepish. Piccolo is pissed off. I mean, all of this is pretty much indicating that like Goku really just didn't remember who Pan was. And some people are just like consistently pissed that like Goku's basically a Neanderthal mentally in Super. I understand that like I mean, some people legitimately like believe like between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball like Z, Goku is a well-developed character, which I can't say he isn't. But like people also think like it's like really good like character writing as that series progresses, which I would contend that it, it at least peaks in you know Cell Saga. I don't think it gets any better in the Cell Saga writing for the remainder of that series. Maybe you can say Majin Vegeta. You know, I'll give you that kind of a culmination, but. I mean, we basically get that at the end of Cell Saga. Like, you know, he goes from being, you know, an asshole in the beginning of Cell Saga or Android Saga to being, you know, selfless almost uh, by the end of it. So, I, I mean, I don't think he closed out anything other than, like, Trunks, Kid Trunks is really his kid, while Future Trunks is, like, not particularly his kid. He, like, damn near dies for Future Trunks. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'll give you Majin Vegeta. I don't think there's any, like, other really moments that I'm like, oh, my God, like, Majin Buu is like just way better writing than Cell Saga, and at, by the point of Super, like just the writing is just like I'm not disrespecting anybody by saying this. It's been said a thousand times. Like everybody said it, bef you know, leading up to this point, the writing in Super is not good. Like it's just it's fun. It's just a fun, just kick back, turn your brain off, just watch Shonen at his most distilled. But by no means the writing is like particularly like great. Um, so I'm not really pissed off about, like, hmm. I think I missed an appointment. I'm not sure, but shit, I guess we'll figure it out. I'll get to the appointment. They're like, hey, you missed that shit. I'm like, okay, well, fuck it. I'm just, like, looking at my calendar here. Oh, uh, anyway, <laughs> what are you going to do? Anyway, um, so we kind of get here. There's not a single thing to be made in the world domination racket. With their fruitless nonsense behind us, I'll direct all our... Oh, I'm fucking up, dude. <laughs> With their fruitless nonsense behind us, I'll, I have to do the Trump hands. I'll direct all our efforts towards pharmaceutical R&D. And that pretty much, I think, more or less is the end of the Red Ribbon uh, Army, probably. The official ending, I think, here. So, we have Piccolo and Gohan pulling up. You know, quaint black woman. You know, we don't have too many... Black people in Dragon Balls is you gotta you gotta appreciate it, and she's wondering who that is, Goku. I think she like punches Goku in the face. I'm imagining here. She tries to kick him. Uh, I feel like that scene is reminiscent of something I've seen before, like Pan trying to hit Goku. I feel like I've seen that before. So, damn, this is a real send off here. That's crazy. Holy shit! What a what a fucking, like, last couple of pages there. It reminds me of GT. I don't remember what part of GT this would be, but it reminds me of GT a little bit. But yeah, Pan tries to hit Goku. Speedy blesses him. You know Goku. He's not going to get speed blessed by anybody except his son. 
and basically is more or less lover of Frieza, but that's, a, that's about it. Um, you know, Piccolo, kind of the last panel, which I appreciate. I appreciate that's what they went for, you know. The 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 uh, the two granddads, so to speak, and and Gohan kind of coming through for Piccolo. So, yeah, they do a little bit of race, try to see who can fly better. Really, really wonderful kind of last couple pages for what I mean. This this arc in general, like, has been so much of a kind of culmination. Like this, basically, the entire arc. Like I imagine this chapter was planned out while Toriyama was alive. So. This arc went more or less the way that he would have understood it to go. He would have wanted it to go, at least had some input on how it was going. It's a recap. Like, this did so much more than the movie did for, I think, Dragon Ball, like the entirety of the universe. We had Trunks and Goten being made relevant, even getting some props along the way. Red Ribbon Arby, you know, they go back as far back as Dragon Ball. Cell losing. Uh, and this followed up, you know, Frieza in his piece at the end of the... Um, the previous arc, the, you know, the the heaters and all that. Um, you got Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta wins. Um, you have Gohan again being meta relevant, being maybe the strongest out of the entirety. Uh, Broly kind of figuring out his stuff. I mean, it, to me, it's like pretty much the like. Again, I said the art, uh, the writing in Super is not the best. You know, I definitely abide by that. But at the same time, like in terms of what modern Dragon Ball can produce. I think this is probably one of the. I don't know. I don't think it's the best arc by any stretch of the imagination. But if you're looking past like the whole like, you know, huge guy be some huge guy shit that we've had, litter this this part this you know spinoff. I mean, I think. I think it's pretty much the best you can do in terms of the writing. Uh, good moments of humor, very Dragon Ball esque, OG Dragon Ball esque moments. You know, I, I think this is I think this is a good send off for for Toriyama for you know if this is it for Dragon Ball Super, which they say they have more planned, but if this is the end of Dragon Ball Super, um, I think it'd be a good combination. We do still need to see Black Frieza, but you know, I, I'd be fine without it. You know, I mean, yeah, you know. So the closing part here uh, from basically the English translators here, we're all deeply saddened by the news of Toriyama Sensei's passing. This works as an inspiration to us all. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family, friends, and all the fans who were touched by his work. And uh, that's about it. That is the end of the superhero arc. Uh, one of the tighter arcs in terms of writing uh, that we've got of Super. And I'm hoping that uh, Daima, which is anime only, but they involve Toriyama to a very high degree to understand. Um, hoping that that which seems to be a lot more whimsical and fun and almost OG Dragon Ball-esque of the kind of like, you know, carries the mantle and kind of keeps the fire going. Um, it's the first Dragon Ball, you know, chapter I've done in terms of review in a while. I don't know if you guys enjoyed this, but I got Naruto, uh, well, Boruto coming. Uh, trying to get caught back with JoJo's. Uh, as I understand, jo JoJo Land, I'm on chapter 9. Uh, as I understand, chapter 13, which I think just came out, uh, was fucking fire. I didn't, I saw some, not really spoilers, but like some panels that make me think that like the tone has just shifted dramatically from where I'm at. So glad to hear that. Nine years of Dragon Ball Super. Um, we'll see if we get more, but shout out to Akira for bringing back Dragon Ball. My guy. Shout out to Akira Toriyama, RIP, one of the great ones. And um, Dragon Ball, Immortal Franchise. Can't wait to get more.